Yeah, God bless you, Rob Wood here of Rob Wood's Ministries. I'm releasing part two titled The Sufferings of Christ. Trust me, this will not go down as one of the most popular messages I preach, but it is the truth. Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation or trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So there's really only two kinds of people, those that are being overcome or those that are overcomers. And in the book of Revelations, Christ said to many of the churches, to he who has an ear to hear and to he who overcomes, this is what you will become. So, you know, we've got to outlast our contradiction. Certainly Joseph has a dreamy. The man finds himself in a pit in prison. God actually uses him and does something in him. So when he comes out of that prison, when he meets his brothers, he did not kill them. He became a friend of theirs. So the sufferings, the persecution, the trials, the fires of God, whatever you want to tatter to call it, there is a purpose to it. The word tribulation, by the way, means grievous trouble, severe trial, suffering, affliction, or to squeeze. Now, that's what it says. Jesus, in the world, you will have tribulation or trouble. That's how wine is made, by the way. It's stomped. The grapes are stomped. So the fine wine can come out. And, you know, the Bible says it pleased the Father to see the Son crushed. And, you know, I'm going to give you the scriptures again. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 17. 1 Peter chapter, ver chapter 4, verse 1. Verse 12, 13. And 16, I'm now taking it in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. To the elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. My God, people, there will be seasons of fire, trial. God will never leave you there. It will be unjust for him. Don't pitch your tent in the valley. You're coming out. And as a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of of the glory that will be revealed now that word partaker means to have the nature or character if you want to have the glory that will be revealed then you've got to be a partaker of the sufferings to be a partaker of the glory 1 peter chapter 5 verse 10 this is very powerful i want you to pay attention but may the god of all grace it's always through his grace didn't Paul say he pleaded several times with the Lord to remove the thorn in his flesh? It was not his mother-in-law, by the way. The Paul pleaded, and God says, My grace is sufficient for you. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, key, after you have suffered a while, again, most historians say what Job went through was only six months. After you have suffered a while, what will God do? He will perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. 1 Peter 5.10 Grace of God, the God of all grace has called us to eternal glory. After you have suffered a while, he will perfect you. God is perfecting you in his image. And sometimes this is through what comes. There's mountaintop experiences and there's valley experiences. God, you can't camp on on the mountain. Jesus, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, Peter said, let us build a tent. This is incredible. I want to camp out here. I don't want to leave this place of glory. Jesus' face manifested, shone white as snow, the glory of God. He, Jesus, no, we've got to go down to the people. They need ministry and help. So the, the, the mountaintop is where we become refilled, refueled, that we have counters, the love of God. And then there's also the dark night of the soul that there are certain winter seasons that can come where it seems like you're bearing no fruit. But again, he will perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and then he will settle you. Now, listen to this in the book of Luke. Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus is baptized by John. This is like a mega thing that happened for him. The heavens open, a voice comes, this is my son who, who I love. God endorses the son, the father. And then it's right after that, Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Led by who? Led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. 
So right after the baptism, this was great. Jesus was baptized. John, ba my God, the sun's emerging. Immediately, the spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. Do you think it was fun? 40 days, 40 nights, it says, being tempted by the devil. I mean, this is like a showdown, man, between God, Jesus and the, there's no, there's no contest, trust me. But it says he ate nothing, he was hungry, and you know how the enemy comes, throw yourself off these rocks, commit suicide, eat this bread. Of course, he couldn't eat that bread, he didn't eat for 40 days, it would have killed him. And, and Jesus defeats the enemy every time with the word, it is written, it is written, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, what Luke chapter 4, verse 13, when the devil ended every temptation, in other words, he exhausted all the tricks in the book, he departed from him until an opportune time. In other words, the, another translation says, because he had nothing on the Son of Man. So you don't want to add warfare to your life. In the book, in, in the, it says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. So you've got to be submitted to God, You've got to resist him, but if there's open doors, open gates that the enemy can come in where he has access and a foothold, the Bible says don't give the enemy a foothold. He left him for an opportune time. Luke 4, 14, I love this. Ready? Here goes. Fireworks, the end, the end climax. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. He, he has the, he, he's, another translation says he's armed with the power. He now has an arsenal. Because the enemy left him, he's ready for battle. God allowed him to go through the wilderness. And if he went through the wilderness, what makes you think you're not going to go through the wilderness? In the book of James, chapter 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing very, how many, what kind of trials? Various trials. But knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, you know, it'll produce patience. When someone's driving slow in front of you, God will be faithful to allow more people to drive slow in front of them. It happens to me all the time. I used to drive through where there was this older, the elder age home. The older people, the, God, the Lord would always allow the slowest person. This, you know, in a speed zone of 35 or 40, this person would be going 8 to 12 miles an hour. My God, the, bl the blood would be boiling out of my... I, it would, it let, God is faithful. He will allow you to go through that. I'm just joking with you a little bit. This really wasn't a trial, but I'm just kidding. Anyway, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Let me read that again. Count it all joy when you fall. You know, your joy is, is your strength. And you can shorten your valley and the trial you're in through joy. Because if you fight and screaming and kicking like a baby, that when you, you know, potentially God's fine tuning you, aligning you through conviction, maybe you're getting a little spanking, maybe he's tuning you up. That does happen. The Lord loves those he chastises. If he didn't chastise you, the Bible says you would be as an illegitimate child. He has to in certain seasons because most of, most of the time we deserve it. Now, I'm a grace preacher. You can look at many of my videos on YouTube, many of my messages on television, radio. I do media, media ministry. I do speak at several conferences. I speak in churches. I'm a grace preacher, but this is all Bible. I just gave you almost a dozen scriptures literally backing up where there will be certain seasons that we will have to endure the cross because Jesus said if anyone wants to be my disciple, let him carry his cross daily. Not weekly, not monthly, not quarterly, not yearly. It is a daily walk where we've got to carry our cross. You know, the enemy could potentially be waiting to trip you up, but you've got to hide behind the cross and you will outlast the trial that is not designed to take you down. But when you get through it, you will come forth as fine gold. God bless you, Rob Woods, signing out here of Rob Woods Ministries.